بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. We have integral x from zero to one of the inverse tangent of x over one plus x squared log x log one plus x squared. In a previous video, we had the same integrand, but x was from zero to infinity. So we write our integral as an integral from zero to infinity minus an integral from one to infinity. We know this guy. In the integral from one to infinity, replace x by one over x. We obtain the inverse tangent of one over x, which is by over two minus the inverse tangent of x. Log x becomes log one over x, which is minus log x. This part becomes log one over one plus x squared. That's log one plus x squared over x squared, which is equal to log one plus x squared minus log x squared, which is two log x. When we multiply these two brackets, we get four terms. When we apply the linearity of integration, we get four integrals. One of them is exactly the integral that we have on the left-hand side. So we can move that integral to the left-hand side and divide by two. The integral of interest is one half this integral from zero to infinity, which is known. Then we have these three integrals. The good news is that these two were obtained in previous videos. We need now to focus on this one. The integral of interest is integral x from zero to one of the inverse tangent of x times the square of log x over one plus x squared. Then we have all these terms from previous work. Take x in the open integral from zero to one. One over one plus x squared is summation over non-negative integer j of minus one to the j x to the two j. The inverse tangent of x is summation over non-negative integer k of minus one to the k x to the two k plus one over two k plus one. We can replace j here and there by j minus k and start the summation from k. The sum now is minus one to the power j x to the 2j plus 1 over 2k plus 1. Interchange the order of summation. We have summation j from 0 to infinity, k from 0 to j. This sum with respect to k is 1 over 1 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5, all the way to 1 over 2j plus 1. We are talking here about the harmonic number h of 2j plus 1, but this harmonic number includes 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 sixth, and so on. We need to subtract these terms to get this sum. When we take 1 half as a common factor, we find that it is multiplied by the jth harmonic number. The inverse tangent of x over 1 plus x squared is summation j from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the j x to the 2j plus 1, h of 2j plus 1 minus 1 half h of j. Whenever we have logarithmic integrals or harmonic sums, we need this integral x from 0 to 1 x to the a log x to the b. This integral is equal to minus 1 to the b gamma of b plus 1 over a plus 1 to the power b plus 1. Let's go back here. Multiply both sides by the square of log x, integrate from 0 to 1. On the right-hand side, integrate term by term. This integral is minus 1 squared, which is 1, gamma of 3, which is 2 factorial, which is 2. We divide by 2j plus 2 to the power 3. This is 1 over 8 times j plus 1 cubed. Replace j by j minus 1. 2 over 8 is 1 fourth. j plus 1 cubed becomes j cubed. This bracket becomes h of 2j minus 1 minus 1 half h of j minus 1. This harmonic number is h of 2j minus 1 over 2j. That one is h of j minus 1 over j. Minus 1 over j times minus 1 half is 1 over 2j. These two terms go away. We can then split this sum into these two harmonic sums. On the next page, we obtain this one. The generating function of hn is minus log 1 minus x over 1 minus x. x has a magnitude less than or equal to 1. In the summation over positive integer n of minus 1 to the n h of n over n cubed, write 1 over n cubed as integral x from 0 to 1 of x to the n minus 1 log x squared divided by 2. Interchange the order of summation and integration. We get summation over positive integer n of h n times minus x to the power n using the generating function. This is minus log 1 plus x over 1 plus x. 1 over x times 1 plus x can be written as 1 over x minus 1 over 1 plus x split into two integrals. We know this one. Write this one as integral x from 0 to 1, log 1 plus x, d, 1 third times the cube of log x. Integrating by parts, this is equal to minus 1 third integral x from 0 to 1, log x cubed over 1 plus x. 1 over 1 plus x is summation g from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the g, x to the g. Integrate term by term. This integral is minus 1 cubed, that's minus 1, gamma of 4, which is 3 factorial, which is 6. In the denominator, we get g plus 1 to the power 4. If we don't have this minus 1 to the g, the sum is zeta of 4, which is pi to the power 4 over 90. Because we have minus 1 to the g, we need to subtract double 1 over 16, 1 over 1 to the 4, plus 1 over 2 to the 4, plus 1 over 3 to the 4, and so on. That's zeta of 4. So zeta of 4 is multiplied by 14 over 16, 7 over 8. This integral is 7 by to the power 4 over 360. We now know this sum. The next step is to obtain this series representation of tan x times log sine x. The series representation involves the digamma function. It can also be written using harmonic numbers. Consider integral x from 0 to 1, x to the eta over 1 plus x. Write the series of 1 over 1 plus x and integrate term by term. This integral is summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the g over g plus eta plus 1. 
we can write down the summand as minus 1 to the power 2g over 2g plus eta plus 1 plus minus 1 to the power 2g plus 1 over 2g plus 1 plus eta plus 1. This is 1. This is minus 1. Multiply numerator and denominator here and there by 1 over 2. Add and subtract 1 over g plus 1. Add and subtract small gamma over 2. Small gamma is Euler Mascaroni's constant. Using this series representation of the digamma function, we can write this integral as 1 half digamma of eta over 2 plus 1 minus 1 half digamma of eta over 2 plus 1 half. Let's focus now on another integral, x from 0 to infinity, the hyperbolic tangent of x times e to the minus y x. y is a positive real number. Use the substitution x equal to minus half log t. t is equal to e to the minus 2x. This part is e to the minus x, all to the power y. In terms of t, this is t to the power y over 2. When x is 0, t is 1. When x tends to infinity, t tends to 0 from above. dx is minus 1 over 2t dt. We use the minus sign to have the integral from 0 to 1. And here is dt over t. The hyperbolic tangent of x is e to the x minus e to the minus x over e to the x plus e to the minus x. Multiply numerator and denominator by e to the minus x. This ratio is 1 minus t over 1 plus t. This integral is equal to 1 half integral t from 0 to 1, 1 minus t over 1 plus t, t to the power y over 2 minus 1. Split into two integrals. In the first, we have t to the power y over 2 minus 1. In the second, we have t to the power y over 2. These integrals look like this one with eta equal to y over 2 or y over 2 minus 1. So we can employ this result and express this integral in terms of the digamma function. The argument of this digamma function is digamma of y over 4 plus 1. This is equal to digamma of y over 4 plus 1 over y over 4. Simplifying, we get that this integral is 1 half digamma of y plus 2 over 4 minus 1 half digamma of y over 4 minus 1 over y. Replace y by 2n, where n is a positive integer. Multiply this side and that one by sine 2nx and sum over positive integer n. x is in the open interval from 0 to y over 2. When we sum the left-hand side and interchange the order of summation and integration, we get summation over positive integer n of e to the minus 2nu sine 2nx. Sine 2nx is the imaginary part of e to the i 2nx. u is positive. We have a convergent geometric series. We multiply upstairs and downstairs by the complex conjugate of the denominator. Simplifying and taking the imaginary part, we obtain that this sum is sine 2x over 2 times 1 over the hyperbolic cosine of 2u minus cosine 2x. So summation n from 1 to infinity of digamma n plus 1 over 2 minus digamma n over 2 minus 1 over n times sine 2nx over 2. This sum is equal to integral over positive real number u of the hyperbolic tangent of u divided by the hyperbolic cosine of 2u minus cosine 2x times sine 2x over 2. We can take this outside the integral. Then we do the change of variables t equal to the hyperbolic secant of u. When u tends to infinity, t tends to 0. When u is 0, t is 1. The hyperbolic tangent of u, du, is minus dt over t. This part here can be written as 2 times the square of the hyperbolic cosine of u, minus 1, minus, between brackets, 2 times the square of cosine x, minus 1. This is 2, between brackets, the hyperbolic cosine of u squared, minus cosine x squared. This is 1 over t squared. Multiplying numerator and denominator by t squared, we get sine to x over 4, integral t from 0 to 1 of t over 1 minus t squared cosine x squared. The antiderivative is 1 over minus 2 cosine x squared log 1 minus t squared cosine x squared. We can also write sine to x as 2 sine x cosine x. Using the limits of integration and simplifying, we get that this part, which is equal to summation over positive integer n of di gamma n plus 1 over 2 minus di gamma of n over 2 minus 1 over n sine to n x over 2 is equal to minus 1 half 10 x log sine x. Multiplying both sides by minus 2, we get this result here. We now use the result on the previous page to obtain a series representation for log sine x log cosine x. On both sides, replace x by y over 2 minus x. The left-hand side becomes the cotangent of x times log cosine x. On the right-hand side, sine 2 nx becomes sine 2 nx times minus 1 to the n minus 1. Subtract this line from that one. We get that 10 x log sine x minus cot x log cosine x is summation n from 1 to infinity, 1 over n plus di gamma of n over 2 minus di gamma of n plus 1 over 2 times sine 2 nx times 1 minus minus 1 to the n minus 1. This bracket is equal to 2 if n is even, 0 if n is odd. So we can remove this bracket, multiply the sum by 2, replace each n here by 2n. The left-hand side can be written as the derivative of log sine y, log cosine y times minus 1. Use variable y here, y is between 0 and y over 2, integrate both sides from 0 to x. The integral y from 0 to x of sine 4 ny is minus cosine 4ny over 4n. Using the limits of integration, we get 1 minus cosine 4nx over 4n. The numerator is 2 times the square of sine 2nx. 
the integral of this function of y is the square of sine 2nx over 2n. The integral of this part, y from 0 to x, is minus log sine x log cosine x. Multiplying by minus 1, we get that this product is summation over positive integer n of sine 2nx squared over n, di gamma of n plus 1 half minus di gamma of n minus 1 over 2n. When n is a positive integer, di gamma of n is minus a small gamma plus summation g from 1 to n minus 1, 1 over g. This sum is h of n minus 1, which is h of n minus 1 over n. So di gamma of n is minus a small gamma plus h of n minus 1 over n. What about this di gamma function with argument n plus 1 half? Let's investigate 2 times di gamma of 2n minus 2 log 2. This is minus 2 small gamma plus 2 summation g from 0 to infinity. 1 over g plus 1 minus 1 over g plus 2n. Log 2 is summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power g over g plus 1. This is summation over non-negative integer g of minus 1 over 2g plus 1 plus 1 over 2g plus 2. Multiply this sum by minus 2 and combine with this part. We get that 2 di gamma of 2n minus 2 log 2 is equal to minus 2 small gamma plus 2 summation g from 0 to infinity. 1 over g plus 1 minus 1 over g plus 2n minus 1 over 2g plus 1 plus 1 over 2g plus 2. We can replace 1 over g plus 1 by 1 over 2g plus 1 plus 1 over 2g plus 2. Similarly, we can replace 1 over g plus 2n as 1 over 2g plus 2n plus 1 over 2g plus 1 plus 2n. These two terms go away. These two are equal to 1 over g plus 1. We also have these two fractions. Multiply by 2. We get 2 over g plus 1 minus 2 over 2g plus 2n minus 2 over 2g plus 1 plus 2n which can be written as 1 over g plus 1 plus 1 over g plus 1 minus 1 over g plus n minus 1 over g plus n plus 1 half. The right hand side is di gamma of n plus di gamma of n plus 1 half. This means that we can write di gamma of n plus 1 half as 2 times di gamma of 2n minus 2 log 2 minus di gamma of n. Di gamma of n is minus a small gamma plus hn minus 1 over n. Di gamma of 2n is minus a small gamma plus h of 2n minus 1 over 2n. Simplifying, we get that this part of the sum is 2 h of 2n minus 2 h of n minus 2 log 2 plus 1 over 2n. Where are we? Our main interest is this integral. To obtain it, we need to evaluate the integral x from 0 to 1 of the inverse tangent of x times the square of log x over 1 plus x squared. This integral is the difference between two scaled harmonic sums. We have obtained this sum on the second page. We need to obtain that one. We have also obtained the series representation for log sine x, log cosine x. This is summation over positive integer n of the square of sine 2n over 2 multiplied by 2 times h of 2n minus 2 times h of n minus 2 log 2 plus 1 over 2n. We have this identity. Multiply both sides by 4. 4 log sine x log cosine x is log sine squared x times log cosine squared x. Sine squared x is sine x cosine x times sine x over cosine x. Cosine squared x is sine x cosine x over sine x over cosine x. Log sine squared x is log sine x cosine x plus log sine x over cosine x. Log cosine squared x is log sine x cosine x minus log sine x over cosine x. The product of these two brackets is the square of log sine x cosine x minus the square of log sine x over cosine x. Sine x cosine x is sine 2x over 2. Sine x over cosine x is 10x. So this sum here multiplied by 4 is the square of log 1 half sine 2x minus the square of log 10x. Multiply both sides of this identity by x and integrate from 0 to y over 4. Let's consider this part first. Use the change of variables y equal to 10x. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is pi over 4, y is 1. x is the inverse tangent of y. The square of log 10x is the square of log y. dx is dy over 1 plus y squared. This is the integral that we need to obtain the main integral. This is its representation using harmonic sums. The integral of this part after multiplying by x is handled via the substitution x equal to y over 2. y is from 0 to pi over 2. The integrand becomes 1 fourth y times the, the square of log sine y over 2. This is the square of log sine y minus log 2. Expand and split into three integrals. This integral can be obtained using the Fourier series of log sine y. y is between 0 and pi over 2. Log sine y is equal to minus log 2 minus summation over positive integer v of cosine 2vy over v. When cosine 2vy is multiplied by y and we integrate from 0 to pi over 2, we get minus 1 over 4v squared plus cosine by v, which is minus 1 to the power v, divided by 4v squared. We multiply by 1 over v and sum over positive integer v. Summation v from 1 to infinity minus 1 over 4v cubed is minus 1 over 4 zeta of 3. Summation v from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the v over 4v cubed is 1 over 4 minus zeta of 3 times 6 over 8 or 3 over 4. When we sum and multiply by minus 1, we get 7 zeta of 3 over 16. 
the integral with log squared was obtained in a previous video. In the notes, you will find the derivation of this Fourier series. We now have this integral in terms of these two harmonic sums. We integrate the right-hand side term by term. Integral x from 0 to pi over 4 of x times the square of sine 2 nx is pi squared over 64 plus 1 over 32 n squared times 1 minus minus 1 to the power n. Let's first consider when these terms are multiplied by 4 times 1 over 2n. We have 2 times summation n from 1 to infinity. 1 over 32 n to the power 4, that's zeta of 4 over 32. When we sum this part and multiply by 2, we get pi squared over 32 times zeta of 2. Finally, we get minus 1 over 16 minus zeta of 4. Because of this minus 1 to the power n, we need to multiply by 14 over 16, which is 7 over 8. Combining the results, we get 5 times pi to the power 4 over 768. These three terms divided by n are multiplied by the constant pi squared over 64. So let's consider the sum n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, h of 2n minus h of n minus log 2. After obtaining the sum, we multiply it by pi squared over 64 times 2 times 4. From the third page, we know that integral x from 0 to 1 of x to the eta over 1 plus x is equal to 1 half di gamma of eta over 2 plus 1 minus 1 half di gamma of eta over 2 plus 1 half. Replace eta by 2n, integral x from 0 to 1, x to the 2n over 1 plus x is 1 half di gamma of n plus 1 minus 1 half di gamma of n plus 1 half. On page 4, we have obtained the following two results. Di gamma of n plus 1 is minus a small gamma plus h of n. Di gamma of n plus 1 half is minus a small gamma minus 2 log 2 plus 2 h of 2n minus h of n. Subtracting this from that, we get the difference equal to 2 log 2 minus 2 h of 2n plus 2 h of n. So h of 2n minus h of n minus log 2 is equal to minus integral x from 0 to 1 x to the 2n over 1 plus x. Use this in the sum and swap the order of summation and integration. When the magnitude of alpha is less than 1, log 1 minus alpha is minus summation n from 1 to infinity, alpha to the n over n. Thus, this bracket is log 1 minus x squared. It can be written as log 1 minus x over 1 plus x plus 2 log 1 plus x. The antiderivative of log 1 plus x over 1 plus x is 1 half times the square of log 1 plus x. Using the limits of integration, we get 1 half times log 2 squared. What about this integral? Do the substitution y equal to 1 minus x over 1 plus x. The integrand becomes log y over 1 plus y. 1 over 1 plus y is summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the g y to the g. Integrating term by term, then summing, we get minus pi squared over 12. Using these two results, we obtain this sum as log 2 squared minus pi squared over 12. This is what we get when we multiply by pi squared over 8. This bracket was also multiplied by 1 plus minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n cubed. Split into two sums. Split each into three sums. From here, we obtain summation over positive integer n of h of 2n over n cubed. This is summation over positive integer n, h of n over n over 2 cubed times 1 plus minus 1 to the n over 2. This function of n is 0 when n is odd and is 1 when n is even. So the sum with h of 2n is written as these two sums. Then we have the sum involving h of n. Then the sum involving log 2. We also get three sums from here. This sum is zeta of 3. That one is zeta of 3 times 3 over 4. We obtained this sum in a previous video. Employing all these results, we can express this side in terms of these constants and these two harmonic sums. We started with the series representation of log sine x times log cosine x. We multiplied both sides by 4. The left-hand side was written as the difference between two squares. We multiplied both sides by x. Then we integrated from 0 to pi over 4. This is what we get on the left-hand side. The right-hand side was processed on the previous page. When all the results are combined, we get this. These two lines are equal. They involve two alternating harmonic sums, one with hn over n cubed. The other is with h of 2n over n cubed. Using this identity, we can express the sum with h of 2n in terms of the other sum. To obtain this sum, we need that one. We already have it on the second page. Here it is. Using it, we can obtain the sum involving h of 2n. Having both sums, we now have this integral and consequently the integral of interest. This integral is equal to the value of this right-hand side, which involves pi, log 2, Catalan's constant, zeta of 3, 
the imaginary part of the trilogarithm of one plus i over two and the polylogarithm of order four evaluated at one half.